Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday, I answer your questions about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So if you have questions, just leave me your questions down here in the comments. So let's jump in the first one. Thank you, Daniel. Please, is there a way to avoid the, the deactivation that the context menu appears each time when I'm dragging on the timeline with my Apple Pencil? So what he is talking about is basically every time when you use the pencil and you longer press somewhere, especially in the edit page, you get this context menu. I talked about this in the Q&A series in the past already. The only workaround that I know about is to just be a little bit faster. So it, when I grab, for example, this one, it opens the menu. But if I grab it and be fast and then come back, it doesn't open. Okay, that's my workaround. Someone else also had an idea that can we not just deactivate that, but I think there's no option in DaVinci Resolve. At least I didn't know about this. And I don't think that they would deactivate this because that is the main purpose of many people who don't have a keyboard, right? So you want to keep this in. And also if you deactivate that somewhere in the settings, every time you want to use it, you have to come back. So like, yeah, because I still use my pencil a lot also for right click and stuff like that. So I wouldn't like to deactivate it. That's my purpose. Oh, that's that's why I'm telling you this. Speaking of DaVinci Resolve Studio version, I have been thinking about upgrading to the studio version of Resolve because it has what I need for my content for my channel. Great idea. Perfect. Thanks for the comment. So most of the stuff is free in DaVinci Resolve. And I think I have even a video somewhere here on my channel where I talk about the difference between studio and free. But in my opinion, DaVinci Resolve is one of the cheapest softwares out there, even the studio version if you compare that for example to Adobe's Creative Cloud and stuff like that. What do I mean by that? If you have any feature that you like from the studio version, if it's the voice isolation, the magic mask, or there's so many that you get on top, one feature alone could already be the reason why you upgrade. So use it until you reach a point where you say, oh, I want to use that. And then if you see it, you can just upgrade that. Someone else also asked like, how can I upgrade? It's actually very simple. Every time, and I made a video about this one too, but every time when you use an effect, for example, that is studio version only, you will get a message that, hey, this is only in the studio version. You can now upgrade. Looking forward for your review for the speed editor. <laughs> yeah, in the last episode of DaVinci Resolve uh, Q&A, I mentioned and I explained a little bit about my thoughts process about the speed editor and not speed editor. Uh, it will take some time. I don't have it with me right now, but what I can already tell you is that there will be one video for the YouTube channel, which goes over the basic stuff. And then there will be an in-depth, maybe even a module where I go in-depth, oops, where I go in-depth into the speed editor. And this will also be part of the masterclass, which also proves the point. Like I had people like commenting in the past, like this masterclass, since I started that six months ago, every time when I develop something, I find something out new. When I discover something, always it will also go into the masterclass. So this is an ongoing process. The masterclass is so much bigger than it was like three months ago. And as long as I continue here with you guys, exploring stuff, figuring stuff out, answering questions, every time we discover something, this is why this place here is so amazing amazing also with you guys who tune in every Friday because it feels like a family, it feels like a community and also because of that drive, the back and forward, like I like to dig in and see that response from you guys finding out something or I find something out and you like, oh yeah, cool. Anyway, it's fun. That's what I can say. Okay, is there a way to hide media panel? Some, sometimes when I open Resolve, it's hidden, but I can't find how to hide this only uh, show in the windows. So he's talking about this probably in the cut page, the media bin here. If you click this, it doesn't hide. You can go through the other ones and it would be nice. Yeah, I also tested the shortcut for that. I have it now here on eight, it doesn't work. But the thing that does work, if you come to the edit page here, I can activate and deactivate the media pool. So if you wanna work there and you don't wanna see it, that's fine. But some thoughts from my side. If you're honest, if you have here the inspector closed, if we look at this window size here and I come back to the edit page, even turned off, I don't really have more from my, my, my viewer. I don't see much more. So it's nice that I have the space, but it would be okay. I'm, most of the time I have one of those windows open, so barely I have it just open like this. And if you want to have full screen, of course, then you go full screen. But anyway, I have a good question. I have two channels. So he's talking about YouTube channels, one, one for enduro racing and one for live music jams. How do I select which channel you, and you can upload to? Now everything uploads to my music channel. If I want to, to the enduro channel, I have to render it out the files and then yeah, basically upload it separately. Yes, good question. No, there is no way how you can. So what he is talking about, wait a second. Back here in 
YouTube, uh, in DaVinci Resolve. You can upload straight to YouTube. And I talked about this in my last videos where I talked about the HDR uploads and stuff. And if you set up your account here in DaVinci, you can only set up one, of course. Now, I have the same problem. I have my even my DaVinci stuff. One is in German, one is in English. That's why I not use those features. I only showed you that it's possible. If you have one channel and you want to do this, it's nice. But also keep in mind, if you render out your video, it will also take time to upload this one. So I, for example, like the workflow that I finish my videos, continue my stuff. And only if I'm done, like today, for example, I'm batching like three to four videos because the weekend is already busy and I don't have time. So I render everything out separately and I don't upload them now. I finish up my thumbnails and everything. And when I upload, because you can't, do this with DaVinci Resolve. You can't upload a thumbnail or uh, you can do a description, but not perfectly. Like there's many steps involved. You can't do tags. You can't do the playlist. So you have to go back into the app or to YouTube anyway, if you make it proper. Um, so in that way, I just do it in the studio app anyway. So, but it's nice that we can do this, right? And what is my answer to you? Doesn't work. <laughs> you have to decide which of the channels is better and the other one you have to kill. So can you do one for the desktop? That is an interesting question. I kept the image in. This was this Q&A video 14 where I talked about the different social media icons. So there is a pack from Motion VFX. There's a link here in the description if you want to do this. Motion VFX has lots of different packs and there's one is called MTuber. So you have different types of things that is important for you as a YouTuber, like the circle and the social, me the social media logos and stuff like that. And someone was asking me how to create that. Of course you can create them, but my suggestion also for time saving is that you get one of those packs because it will take you a lot of time if you create it for every single one of them that uh, the the price price of a pack like this is, is, yeah, you get it back in one job, in one client video, in one YouTube video that hits, uh, like, anyway. And now the question about, can you do this for desktop? I mean, those packs work for desktop and iPad. So the simple answer is yes, you can buy the same pack and it also works on the desktop. That's the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve. Everything, opposite, everything that works on the iPad definitely works on the desktop. The problem that we have sometimes now with the iPad is, so first of all, we have the full version, okay? That's the reason why we got all the other pages here down there as well. We have the full DaVinci Resolve. The only problem is that not every feature works properly. That's why some of the pages are still hidden, like the Fusion page, and has some crashes. But more and more, with every update, we get more features. It is more stable. So in theory, it's the same software. Every time when an update comes out, like let's, for example, three weeks ago, 18.5.1, we got it for the iPad and the desktop. So in simple terms, everything that works on the iPad is also working on the desktop. And in the opposite, everything that works on the desktop, some work on the iPad, some don't. It depends really on which features they're using. If the feature is working on the iPad, then it works on the iPad as well. Okay, that's it for this week's Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you have any questions, just leave me your questions down here in the comments and I will answer the questions in the next Q&A video. If you like this video, if you like this series, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong. There's so much more value in this complete channel. I think we are today in day 260. So what do I mean by that? Since 260 days, I'm uploading every single day two videos, one in German, one in English, about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad to YouTube. And the only reason why I do this is because of you guys are with me here. Passion for DaVinci Resolve, passion for the iPad. I hope to see you in the next video too. I'm Daniel. Bye.